Welcome back to the channel. It's been a long couple of weeks watching every team but ours play every Saturday. But it's game week now. It's finally here. Hopefully we can put this COVID stuff behind us. There's a lot to talk about, in fact, especially in the recruiting world for Florida. I'm going to show you uh, the uniform combination for Saturday. And we're going to talk a little bit about the matchup. Before we get into Missouri talk, I kind of just want to go over some recruiting news. Florida just picked up a big-time commitment from outside linebacker Jeremiah Williams. He's six three, 224 pounds, ranked 97th nationally by the 247 Sports Composite, the number five weak side defensive end, and the number five player out of Alabama. That is a huge need for Florida. The linebacker position, I'm sure he could see that we are struggling on defense and he could potentially come in and make an immediate impact for Florida. That jumped us all the way, well, two spots to number eight in the 247 sports poll. He also has All-American Bowl honors. He's got a .95 ranking Steve Wilfong among others recently had changed their crystal ball projection for him he was originally supposed to go to Auburn somehow Florida convinced him otherwise the scouting report on him says he's a light edge rusher that needs to add mass at the next level has the versatility to line up with a hand down in a stand-up role on the edge or as an off-the-ball linebacker. Extremely patient and instinctive player. Trusts his athleticism, runs well in space, and will strike and accelerate through contact. Comfortable and aware in pass drops. Plays with great timing as a second-level pass rusher. Nimble and intuitive in tight areas. Has the want and athleticism to fight through blocks to turn the corner as a pass rusher. Great closing speed to the football. There is some frame and body type uncertainty as a line of scrimmage defender. Impact Power 5 starter has the ability to be an early round draft pick. His instincts, they rate him a 10. Pursuit, a 9. Nine for closing speed, first step, nine, athleticism, nine, hand quickness, eight, point of attack, seven, and frame, six. So this is a very well-rounded, huge gift for Florida. The one thing he obviously needs to do is put on a few pounds, add some weight to that frame. He might end up having to redshirt and sit out a year before he makes a big impact. But nonetheless, that's a big get for Florida, and I'm excited. Another crystal ball prediction was changed in Florida's favor a couple weeks ago. For Yusef Margable, six foot four and a half, 304 pound, the number 15th rated offensive guard out of North Carolina, and the number 17th player overall out of North Carolina. He will be making his decision on November 7th, so keep an eye on that. Also another name to look out for, Aaron Armitage, 6'4", 242-pound defensive end, four-star guy. He's going to make his decision on Election Day, November 3rd. It's coming down to USC, UF, and Stanford. He seems like the academic type. He also stated that he didn't know there was a team in the SEC that was ranked as high as Florida when it came to academics. So that's clearly important to him and his decision. It's also interesting that he is from New Jersey. He's a New Jersey guy. And he's got two schools out west in Stanford and USC. So think what you may on that. He's the number 15th rated strong side defensive end. 
crystal ball does, however, favor USC at this moment. However, Tim Brewster is the guy in charge of recruiting this particular player, and we all know what Tim Brewster can do. So don't count him out just yet. He also says he's looking for a university with a great business program, as that's what he will be majoring in. So that may give the edge to one of those programs. However, UF is a great academic school. There's a handful of remaining recruits that I think if we can just get a few of will jump us into the top five and lock us in. However, we already have 25 signees. I'm not sure how much room we're going to be able to come up with. Hopefully we don't have to let some three-star guys go. Not sure what the cap is on how many we're allowed this season. But there's a few I've written down that are must-gets for us, and they are high on Florida's prospect board. Starting off with Xavion Sori. He's an outside linebacker. Four-star guy, number 65th nationally, number five outside linebacker, and the 11th player in Florida from ING Academy. He recently visited UF over the weekend on his own dime, so... That is a very good sign and a very big need for UF. Steve Wiltfong, the director of recruiting at 247 Sports, has not logged a crystal ball for him yet. And the reason why I'm saying that is that's kind of good news because Steve Wiltfong has a 98% accuracy rating. So whenever he blocks in his prediction, he's percent He's correct 98% of the time for this 2021 cycle. So that's huge. Another guy I'm quite positive we're going to get in the crystal ball favors Florida in every single boat would be Bryce Langston, the local guy out of Ocala Vanguard. Six foot, two and a half, 250 pound. 136th nationally, the 11th strong side defensive end, and the 20th player out of Florida. He has every crystal ball favoring Florida, as I just mentioned. One more guy would be Terion Arnold, six foot safety, 180 pounds, out of Tallahassee, Florida. 247 Sports is much higher on him than the composite reflects. They have him at 64th nationally the number two safety, and the number 10th player in Florida. Will Fong has crystal ball to Florida, which is a good sign. However, two others have him going to FSU and Alabama. And one more player of note, this one moving on to the 2022 class, five-star Sam McCall, six foot, 180 pounds. He's the 30th ranked national player. Fourth rated athlete and the number fifth player coming out of Florida. The reason why I'm bringing him up from the 2022 class is he has decided to commit early and get it out of the way. And he will be doing that on October 28th, which is tomorrow. So tune in to, I'm pretty sure it's going to be televised live on CBS Sports Network. Hopefully he's. Anyways, moving on to Missouri week. I know you guys are anxious for some football, as am I. Real quick, I just want to show you the uniform setup we're going to be wearing this Saturday. And doesn't that look wonderful? I think we wore these jerseys last year versus Auburn. However, we wore the white helmets. If I'm not mistaken, the last time we wore. These blue helmets were in the 60s. I could be wrong. Let me know if I'm wrong. But either way, I love this jersey combination. And quite frankly, I wouldn't mind if we made them our full-time home jerseys. They, I love them that much. Um, let me know what you guys think down below. Anyways, I also I just want to kind of... Strongly caution you guys. I know we've had two weeks off. 
for Missouri. And everyone's expecting all these changes on defense. However, it wasn't a normal bye week for us. Everybody was kind of sitting at home in quarantine, probably eating Cheetos. It could very well be a recipe for disaster. Um, five days of preparation, I'm not sure is going to be enough to make all the improvements necessary for this defense that ranks next to last. There's so much that needs to be done and very little time to do it. I do think you'll see some changes. Hopefully some players moving around back to their normal positions with Kyrie Campbell coming back. That's great news. Kyrie Campbell in the middle with Gervin Dexter and the couple other guys we have there can really allow us to move Brian Cox back to the buck um, and Carter back to defensive end. And that just might give our DBs a little more time or excuse me, maybe they won't have to cover for as long if we're, if we manage to get some pressure and that's the one thing we've been missing. Uh, we need to get pressure on the quarterback. Another thing is we are playing a redshirt freshman quarterback. So that is also great news. Because our defense and Todd Grantham, we tend to excel when we're playing young and inexperienced QBs that aren't able to make the same reads as veteran QBs are, such as Kellen Mond. We refer to Jake Fromm last year, Bo Burrow, all these veteran guys that can pick us apart. That just hasn't been the case for these young guys. I'm sure we're going to be sending a lot of pressure at them try to confuse the young man. I think we still win this game, but I don't think it's necessarily going to be because of our defense. I think we will see some improvements. I just don't think you're going to see a defense that has completely flipped the script. So I know it's a lot, I know it's a lot to ask, but guys, be patient with this defense. The good news is we have two weeks until we play Georgia to work out the kinks. I think you'll see a lot more changes between Saturday and next Saturday when we play UGA. Um, also, offensively, we get Ethan White back at center. So maybe our run game kind of improves as well. And we can run the ball a little bit more and keep them on their toes. Missouri struggled last week against Kentucky. However, Kentucky is a pretty darn good football team. So we can't come into this game sleeping on Missouri or we will lose. Also, we might have as few as five, I want to say five guys out to COVID. Mullen really didn't release too much info on that. However, I read an article that there could be about five guys missing from Saturday's game. So I'm going to throw some stats up on the screen real quick, and then we'll get to the keys to victory for both sides. And then finally, the prediction. Missouri is coming in here at 2-2, two and two, but they are on a two-game win streak. They have wins versus LSU and Kentucky which are very solid wins, and that's why we cannot overlook this Missouri team. And it's very possible that with the bad luck straw we just got dealt, Florida could come out of here a loser. That's why I want you guys, I can't stress enough that we need to be patient with this defense and Todd Grantham at least for another week. Just one more week, that's all I'm asking for. Because win or lose this game Saturday, we are still in control of our own destiny. It is on Halloween, so will we be getting tricked or are we going to get a treat? That's to be determined, but let's take a look at some of these stats. It might help you make up your mind and we know what to look for. They're coming in here averaging 24 points per game compared to Florida's 42 they rush for 691 rush yards a game. 
or excuse me, 691 rush yards on the season. Florida has 394. They average 3.6 per attempt. Florida averages 4.8, which is great. We just don't rush the ball a lot. They have six rushing TDs compared to our two. So they are a pretty, they're pretty good at running the football. Passing yards per attempt, they average 8.36 compared to Florida's 9.68. We are over a yard more than them, which is good. But that is still not bad for Missouri. So, so far, they're looking like a pretty balanced team. They average 269 yards passing per game. We average 342. They have thrown five passing touchdowns to our 14. They have 1,078 total passing yards. Florida has 1,026. Now keep in mind they are close in some of these categories because they have played one more game than Florida has. <clears throat> they average 5.7 per play, and that's on total offense. 5.7 per play, Florida 7.6. 418 yards per game compared to Florida's 464. So, again, very close there. There is a trend here moving towards a high-scoring affair. They have 11 total touchdowns to Florida's 16. Now, also, once again, that's one less game, or one more game than Florida has. So Florida really has a bit more of an advantage than on paper says. Time of possession is key here. They hold the ball, given their running ability. They hold the ball for 32 minutes, 41 seconds a game, compared to Florida's 27 minutes and 30 seconds. Third down percentage, 47.5%. Florida is at 57.14. Not bad. It's actually pretty good. Fumbles lost. Fumbles and lost fumbles. So they fumbled 10 times, and they've lost it 5, 50% of the time. Florida also 50% of the time, but we've only fumbled four times and lost it two. So that leads me directly to the keys to a Florida victory and keys to Missouri as well. Keys to Florida is to stop Missouri's running game, obviously. Make them pass to beat us. With their young quarterback, as I mentioned earlier, if we can make them one-dimensional, there's no way that freshman single-handedly beats Florida through the air. Although we have pretty much let every quarterback do that so far, I expect some changes to be made. And hopefully we're not as bad on third down as we have been. If we just get a few stops... That's all we need is just a few stops. We don't have to stop them 50% of the time. With Florida's offensive capabilities, a few stops will be more than enough. And the way I've done these keys to the game, it's kind of the same way in reverse with Missouri. It's the same key. If they can stop Florida's passing game and make Florida run the ball to beat them, that would be a big advantage for them as well. Control the clock and time of possession. Missouri is used to having long drives and running the football a lot. And Florida is used to letting that happen. So if they limit our possessions on offense, kind of like Texas A&M did, we only had six or eight possessions, I believe, that entire game. And that cost us the game. We scored on most of them, but it wasn't enough. It came down to who had the ball last. and We fumbled and pretty much handed the game right to them. So same key for Missouri. If they can keep on the trend that they are and control the time of possession in this football game, they're going to be in good position to win. And lastly, if we can keep Missouri on their trend of fumbling slash turnovers, they have fumbled the ball 10 times in four games seems like a lot to me 
All we need is one or two of them. Missouri fumbles the ball or throws an interception or two. Florida wins this game. And same in reverse for Missouri. Florida makes a couple offensive mistakes like we did against Texas A&M. We could be in trouble. So with all that being said, I think we might come out a little rusty at first because of the two-week layoff. But I do think Florida pulls out a victory here. It may be close, but I'm going to go with Florida 36, Missouri 28. Let me know what y'all believe is going to happen in this game. And let me know if you just you think I'm wrong or if you think I'm on to something. I like to get you guys' feedback. I'm always on there checking for comments, so feel free to comment. Hit that like button as well. Good luck Saturday. Hoping for a Gator victory. Go Gators. We'll see you next week. If you liked today's video, please remember to hit the like button down below, share, and subscribe for all the latest Gator news all year long. From recruiting to matchup previews, post-game highlights, and much more.